So now let's talk about singly linked lists. Now this is a very common and honestly commonly confused data structure uh, that is much faster in certain operations than an array. Now the major differences between this and an array are the way that it's stored in memory as well as the fact that it's dynamically allocated. Now it can also insert and delete items faster, but the major disadvantage is that you can't index items um, randomly. So using like zero, one, like you can't index by numbers and that's going to take longer to find than an array. So it's going to run in on time, linear time, as opposed to constant time like arrays do. But anyways, what is a singly linked list? So it is comprised of what we call nodes. Now a node has a value, which is the actual value of the item. So maybe like Tim, Joe, one, true, whatever you're storing in the singly linked list. And then it has a property which is called next. And this is what we call a pointer to the next node in the list. And you guys are going to see how this works in a second. Now, when we actually implement and create our own singly linked list, what we typically do is we write a class. I'm just going to stay uh, do SSL for short. So singly linked list. And this has a few different properties. It has a head property, which points to the first node in our singly linked list. And then what it does is, well, it can have a like a counter node keeping track of how many nodes are in our list, but it also just has a bunch of methods. So maybe something like add, maybe something like remove and maybe find. And then I don't know, we'll add another one says add first. You can add as many kind of methods to this as you want and make them as customizable as you want. Now, when we create this um, singly linked list, it looks something like this. So I'm going to start drawing it. These squares are nodes. Okay, So each of these squares represents a node. In this, the first square is what we call our head node. And it is what is going to be stored here in this SSL um, singly linked list class. Now, when we start our singly linked list, we start head pointing to the value null. And then when we originally add our first node, we will create a new node and point head to that. It's just a quick nuance there in case anyone's confused on how we start with that head node. But these nodes have two properties. They have a value and they have a next property. So the value is usually what we write in the middle. So maybe something like seven is the actual value it's storing. And then the next property means what it's doing is it's pointing to another node. So what next is actually storing is this next node. And this next node is an object just like the previous node. And maybe it holds a value something like negative three. And it again has a next property. This next property points to the next node. And then this node has a value, maybe say one. And then this has a next property. And this next property points to, in this case, null, because we don't have any more nodes in our list. And that is as simple as this is. Now, looking at this, maybe you can kind of understand why this is faster in certain operations than an array. Now, first of all, this is dynamically allocated, which means that whenever you add a new node, all you need to do to add a new node to this is simply find the last node here. So loop through our list, traverse, find this last node, which is one, and then set its next property to a new node that has whatever value in it that we want. So now we'll say our next value is maybe eight. And then this next property, well, goes to the next node, which is null because there's none left. And that's all you need to do to add a new node. So it's a lot faster than having to shift every single element. Now, that being said, we still need to find this last node in the list to add it to. So we have to search for that, but it is faster than an array to add that. Now, same thing here if we want to insert a node somewhere else. So let's say we want to insert a node. Um, I'm going to keep that null there. And we want to insert it in between three and one. So I want to insert that same node, which was eight has that next property. Well, all I need to do to do this rather than shifting every single element in memory like we did with arrays is change the pointers on these nodes. So I'm going to change the pointer on this node to be equal to eight. And then I'm going to add a pointer from eight to one. In that way, now when we loop through our list, well, we go seven, negative three, eight, then one. And it doesn't change the memory location of these nodes, which saves us a lot of time. So I'll change this pointer. So it goes down to eight. And then eight now is going to point to one. And now that is the new order of our list. And if we want to insert more things, it's as easy as changing the pointers. And again, I'm calling these pointers, but it's just pointing to these nodes. And these nodes are these little black boxes that have the value and have next. Now, another very fast operation on these is adding to the beginning of the list. And I'll let you kind of guess why that is. Like, say I want to add an item to the very beginning of this list. All I need to do to do that is put a node. Maybe we put one up here. I'm just drawing it small because it's kind of hard to put here. 
let's say the value is negative one. Now all I do is I add a pointer to this head value and I repoint head so now it goes to this. And now when I wanna access seven, all I have to do is traverse through negative one, then seven, then negative three and so on. And now this is the head node and the first node in our list. It's very fast to do that because all you need to do is just point to the head and then change head to be this new node that we've added in very fast, right? And that's why it's really, really nice. And a lot of people like using it. Now, another massive advantage of the singly linked list is they don't use a lot of memory because they only have these pointers that are going to one other node and a value as opposed to a doubly linked list, which is or not doubly double linked list, <laughs> which is something that we'll talk about in another tutorial. But anyways, that is kind of how, you know, you add, remove things and add to the front. Now I'm going to show you with a little bit of pseudo code how we can actually do these operations. So add, remove, find, add first, because a lot of people get confused on how that works. So let's kind of just make this list a little bit simpler now and get rid of all those insertions I was doing. And hopefully you understand how this pointing works. This head is all that we need to keep track of in SS SLL. Since we have access to this head node, all we actually need to do is keep going from the neighbor. So the next of head and the next of that next and the next of that next of that next to look through all of the different elements that are inside of our linked list. So I'm going to do this with a while loop. It's very easy to do, and I'm sure you guys can probably figure it out on your own. But essentially, we're going to start and use a variable if I get out of my eraser here that's called current. Now, if I say current equals head, what I'm going to do is make the condition on my while loop while current does not equal null. So immediately this catches for us the first condition, which is we have nothing in our list. So if we want to be traversing the list, and I'm just showing you a very basic traversal here, if there's nothing in our list, we won't bother even looking because current is going to be equal to null, right? Now, if it's not, and we do have a node, then we can repeat the next process. So let's say we're looking for a certain value and maybe we want that value to be represented as, I don't know, val equals five or something. And we're searching for that value in our list. Well, what we can do is we can say if, and in this case, current dot value equals equals val, then we can simply break out of this loop because we found what we're looking for. And then maybe we print out where it is or whatever we want to do. Right. But that's how we can like search for a value. Now, once we've done that, so we've checked this condition, we didn't break out of the loop. The next step is to simply go to the next node. So we say current is going to be equal to current dot next. Now I'll walk you through this and kind of run this whole piece of code for you, but this is very straightforward. All we're going to do is keep going to the next node until eventually there is no next node to go to. And once we hit that null condition, we've successfully traversed through our entire list. And this is very easy to do. So when you want to add something, remove something, find something, you start with a basic traversal like this. Once you find the node that you want, then you can do whatever operation there you need to do and then break out of the while loop. But this is how you find whatever node. And once you know how to find a node and traverse this, you can do any operation you want. So we're going to say value equals five. So if we're looking for value equals five in here, let's walk through how this works. So current equals head. That means head, which is this right now, is the first thing that we're looking at. Now, if current dot value equals equals val break, does it? Does seven equal five? No, it doesn't. So what's the next thing we do? We say current equals current dot next, which now means current is negative three because the next value of head is three. All right. So we're actually pointing to this node, right? Like this whole thing is what we're pointing to. And same here, we're pointing to this whole node. Now we have this node. So what we do is say, well, current does not equal null. Well, this one isn't null. If current dot value equals val break, does it? No, it doesn't. So now we move to the next node that is the next node from here. So now we're looking at one and you guys get the point on how this traversal works. We just keep going next, 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 next until eventually we come here, we look at null and then we go no and we break. And that is how you traverse a singly linked list. Now, knowing this operation, we can apply and create add, remove, find and add first very easily. If we want to add first, well, we don't even need to traverse because we actually know where that first element is. So let's write the code to add the first element into our, um, what do you call it? Singly linked list here. I'm just going to get the large eraser out to get rid of this faster, hopefully. All right. So if we want to write the code to simply add a new node at the beginning of our list and we want to write add first, well, to do that is very easy. 
all we're going to do is say, in this case, I'll say n equals node like this. And then maybe we'll set a value for it. So we'll say the value is like 10. Maybe we pass that in through a parameter. However, this node is working. However, we're setting the value next. We do that. Or, you know, to make this more transparent, we say n equals node, say n dot value equals whatever value we're adding. Maybe that's seven or maybe it's eight. Okay. So we'll change that to eight. All right. So now the n dot value is eight. All we need to do is point the head to n dot value and then point um, n, sorry, to whatever head is. So we can say n dot next equals head, right? Because now we're just going to say, if we have this new node, we say eight, we'll start by pointing this to here. And now that we have that, all we need to do is change the pointer of head to eight. So now we say head equals n. And now our head node is n, which is the new node we added, which is up here. Eight is now pointing to seven and we completely have a singly linked list and we've just changed the first element. And that is very quick. There's only four lines of code, right? And we can even do this in less if we had it set up properly. All right. So now that we've done that, let's talk about removing a node or finding and then removing a node. So let's say we want to remove the node negative three there and I'll leave that eight in there for now so we can understand how this works. Well, we'll start by doing a traversal of our list and we need to do this because we need to have access if we're going to remove three to the node before that and the node after that. So we need to perform a traversal so that we can stop at the node before it and change the pointers accordingly so that three is removed. So what we'll do is that same thing that we've done before. So we'll say, I'll just say cur equals head. We'll say while cur does not equal null. And now what we'll say is if cur dot next equals equals and in this case, whatever element we're looking to remove. So we'll say like R equals negative three for what we want to remove. Then what we will do is start changing the pointers. So we're going to change the pointer of whatever current is. So the next value is equal to whatever this is next value is. So all we need to do to, to remove three is go like that. So now there'll be no pointer to three and then seven will have the pointer to one. So we won't have removed one. So that's all we need to do because if you get rid of um, what do you call it? If you get rid of this one here, I don't know why that's doing that. Oh, I need to change this to that. If we get rid of this pointer, nothing points to three, even though three still points to one, that doesn't matter because we'll never actually access three. So what I do is just say cur dot next or not next. Sorry. Yeah, actually cur dot next is equal to whatever current dot next dot next. Now the way that this works is the next value on current is negative three, right? And this negative three points to one. So all I do is say that current dot next, which is now pointing to three is actually equal to whatever current dot next dot next is, which points to one. So we're, since we're pointing to one there, we just change this pointer to one and then that's all we need to do. And then we can simply break out of this while loop and we have successfully removed the element. Now, if we reach a point where we've looped through everything, current equals null, then that means three did not exist and therefore it did not get removed. And that is as easy as it is to remove and add things to a singly linked list. 